And we can see it extracted the local users, in this case, root and metabase, the processes that are running right now on the machine, its file system, its network graph with the way that the network is configured, the output of the IP command, ARP command, and the services that are running on the target, which have open ports. Here we can also see a command history with all the commands that Sniper runs in order to extract the information that we can see right now. Hi there, I'm David and I'm a security research engineer. Today I'm going to show you how you can use pentesttools.com to perform a vulnerability assessment and penetration test workflow on a specific domain. I'll use pentestground.com for this demo. I'll show you the workflow from the beginning to the end, starting from recon and ending with exploitation of a vulnerability we discovered. Let's get started. We created pentestground.com to serve as an educational platform and a target you can use to evaluate how efficient your vulnerability scanners are. Pentestground includes deliberately vulnerable web apps and network services, and we specifically designed it to cater to the needs of penetration testers, ethical hackers, and other offensive security pros. It simulates a real-world vulnerable system exposed on the internet and doesn't require authentication. The pentestools.com team created updates and supports this free resource. Inside pentestools.com, we use the workspaces concept to define an assessment. Therefore, I'll create one clean workspace for this demo. We can do this like this, add workspace with the demo name, and now let's switch to it. The pentestground.com domain will be our target. Since we want to find subdomains associated with this domain, I'll select the subdomain finder tool to find all the subdomains. If you want to scan a target from a local network, we can still do it using our VPN agents to access it. In our case, the target is exposed on the internet, so we'll skip this. Sometimes scans take up quite some time, or maybe we just set up some scheduled scans that run each day, week or month. A good way to keep in touch with our scans is to use notification settings. We can access them in settings, at notifications, and we can add uh, options to get notifications via Slack, email, or custom webhooks whenever a scan is finished or has some kind of vulnerabilities in it. For example, I'll set up a high-risk finding notification, which will trigger every time a scan finds a vulnerability with a high-risk level. I'm going to make it send me a message on uh, the security notifications channel on Slack. At the end of the vulnerability assessment, we will want, of course, a report. This report can be customized as we like. Let's add, for example, a custom logo for our reports. We'll use the Pentest Ground logo for this. We'll go in Reporting, at White Label, and we'll upload the custom logo, which is right here. And now, each report will have this logo instead of the default logo. Based on the subdomain finder results, let's dig in on the main result, which is pentestground.com. Let's use TCP port scanner to scan all its ports. So we go to custom and I want to use the full port range for this scan. And let's see what we can find. Now that the port scan is finished, let's look at the results. Straightforward, port 80 and 443 are the default ports for this target. On port 445, uh, we have OpenSSH. We have Redis here. So let's use our website recon tool to get a more detailed idea about what is behind each port that we found open, where we don't have a lot of information from Nmap. Now we are waiting for these scans to finish, but to see a more compact view of the technologies that we find behind these ports, we can use our attack surface view. Here we can see our target, its open ports, and what has website recon found behind each port. For example, on port 81, we have these technologies right here. We can see a screenshot of this website. It seems like a custom website. On port 3000, if we look at the screenshot, we can see its metabase, which is a network service. 
on port 7001 we have nothing that's uh, really conclusive so we'll try to just scan it with network services see what we can find and on port 8080 we see we have an uh, express and node.js app so it might be a good idea to scan it with our network scanner tool We have an HTTP application hosted on port 81. Let's scan this port using Website Scanner. We go to this tool, Website Scanner, and we start the scan. We have multiple open ports discovered. Let's input all of these ports into Network Scanner and see what it finds. Of course, excluding port 81, which we already started the scan on with Website Scanner. We'll go to custom because we only want to scan the ports that we found, not some default preset. We'll select all scanning engines and we'll input port 8080, 3000 and 7001. We click on I'm authorized to scan this target and we start the scan. Now, after these scans will finish, we will receive uh, notifications on our Slack channel. Let's check out Slack to see if our scans finished. We can see that both scans finished, the website scanner one with four high-risk findings, while the network scanner one with nine high-risk findings. Let's check the report on the website scanner. We can see that we have all the findings uh, sorted by the risk, the high, medium, low, and informational ones. We have an XSS, we have information about it, like the method that was used, uh, the vulnerable parameter, and the evidence which uh, describes how was this XSS found by Pentest tools. Also, for every finding, we have a replay attack button which will replay this attack for us live. We also have the history of requests and responses which show us how this vulnerability was found. For example, for this SQL injection, we can click here and see the original request and response thread. First, we have this uh, regular request, which sets uh, nothing for the query and receives a 200 OK response. And then we see the second request, which is the SQL injection one, which uh, sets a parameter to the query and receives a 500 internal server error, which shows us this uh, web application has an SQL injection vulnerability on it. We can also see we found the Python code injection vulnerability, some medium risk findings like insecure cookie settings, course misconfigurations, vulnerabilities found for server-side software like jQuery, outdated JavaScript libraries, administration consoles found, some low findings, for example, this suspicious comment in the source code, and of course, some informational findings, for example, the results of our spider crawler. Pentest Tools also shows us what other checks have been done, but didn't generate any finding. For example, nothing was found for local file inclusion, for uh, directory listing, for debug messages, and not all of these finds that we can see here. Now let's generate a report for this. We can do it on export, we can select HTML, PDF, JSON, and all these uh, other formats. I'm going to select PDF and export this uh, report. And uh, once it's done, we will see that we have our custom logo put right here. And all the information we had on our page is now in PDF format. We also have the risk description here, which basically describes what are the risks that this vulnerability implicates the recommendations to mitigate this vulnerability, some references to read about this vulnerability. For example, here we have a link uh, to read about XSS attacks and uh, the classification of the vulnerability. Let's check now our network scanner report as well. We see here we have nine high findings, seven medium ones, one low and 71 informational ones. It found a remote code execution for Metabase, a remote uh, command execution for Oracle WebLogic, pet traversal, another remote code execution, another one on Node.js, and so on. 
you might see here that some findings are duplicate. For example, this metabase one, which we also see right here. The reason for that is that some findings are generated with our own sniper engine, while others are generated with nuclei. For the findings generated with sniper, we can also use this button here to validate them and extract some data from the target. For each finding, we have here the evidence. This shows us how the vulnerability was discovered. In this case, we use the following request that we have right here, a post request to the validate endpoint with this data in it, which executed the ID command on the target that we gave to Sniper. In our case, this vulnerability is an out of band one and the data was received on our logger. And here we can see the data. So the command actually executed as the metabase user. Let's look through all these findings. Here are the high ones. Uh, if you scroll down, we can find here the medium ones, the low ones, and here are the informational ones. At the end, we can see all the tests that have been made. A complete version-based scan has been uh, performed. And here we have each check in detail. The network scanner discovers some vulnerabilities that can be validated using Sniper Auto Exploiter. Let's see what information Sniper can extract. Here we have the target. We're going to input the port that we already know we found vulnerable, which is 3000. We are going to enable all extractors. And I'm going to leave safe exploits only as this target is uh, live, exposed on the internet, and I don't want to risk to crash it. If you have the permission to crash the target, you can unclick this. Let's start the scan and see what Sniper can extract. The Sniper scan finished. We can see all the information that it extracted. First, some basic information like the user, IP address, operating system and architecture. Then we can see it extracted the local users, in this case, root and metabase the processes that are running right now on the machine, its file system, its network graph with the way that the network is configured, the output of the IP command, ARP command, and the services that are running on the target, which have open ports. Here we can also see a command history with all the commands that Sniper runs in order to extract the information that we can see right now. Let's generate a report with all this information, PDF as well. And here it is. It contains all the information uh, that we also saw on the website, but in PDF format. Uh, here we can also see the content of the files. For example, this is the group file. And as you can see, we have the custom logo that we set up in the beginning. Let's also generate a report from the Network Vulnerability Scanner to see how this one looks. It's basically similar to the one on the website scanner, containing information about how was this vulnerability detected with the evidence, the vulnerability description, uh, where we also say the root cause of this vulnerability and how we found it. The risk description, which informs uh, users what can be done with this vulnerability by an attacker. In this case, an authenticated remote attacker could gain remote code execution access, which results in a fully compromised server. A recommendation of what to do in order to mitigate this vulnerability and references to read more about this vulnerability. Now, if we want to generate a pen test report, we can do this from the findings page. Let's go there. Now we need to select all the findings that we want to include in our Pentest report. We can also filter them, for example, by risk level, source. We can select only network scanner findings or only website scanner findings. I'm going to select all of them. And then we just click on generate report. Here I'm going to select uh, to receive an editable Word document Pentest report because I want to have full access to it in order to modify it how I might like. We're going to click on export and we're waiting for the report to be generated. And now we have the final version of this report in Word document format.
everything you saw so far is already available to you inside the platform if you already have a license. If you want to try out our product, click on the link in the description box below to get started. I hope this video helped you see how you can use pentesttools.com in your workflow and also pentestground.com as an educational resource. I invite you to give it a try and let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Until the next video, take care.